I'm so sorry. We're just trying to make sure that Wait, and here we go. So sorry. There we go. Now try. Opa! He called my first bat. All right. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. That's okay. Difficulties, everyone. Mahalo, thank you so much, um, Stacy, for the welcome. And aloha my kako, everyone. Aloha, Eleanor, so nice Hi. to see you. I can't Hi. help it, I always squeal when I see you, so. <laughs> we, we, we miss you so much, you know, you, like, we miss you in New York. It's just, there's always a missing piece um, in our lives. I think all the Hula Sisters uh, online right now can uh, tell you the same thing, so. I'm, I'm so happy to be here uh, to congratulate you on your successes. I feel like I've been part of this. This is like your your documentaries are my are my babies because I feel like we've we've been through it like together and with um, our hula sisters in New York. Uh, it's it's been so long. So I um, I remember our viewing parties in the city for American Aloha, so that was really fun. So it's been, uh, so tell us, what have you been up to uh, since you moved to Hawaii? It's been about 10 years now. Yeah, I'm coming up on my 10th anniversary um, since moving to Honolulu. And of course, I still miss New York. I miss all of you very, very much. And of course, I've been thinking of all of you during these very kind of crazy and uncertain times with the pandemic. Um, and I hope everyone is doing well and keeping safe. Um, but I have been um, very lucky and, um, you know, really kind of um, spent the last 10 years trying to figure out how to be a professor uh, at the University of Hawaii. And I have been teaching in the film and video program, which has grown and um, is doing very, very well. Um, and I, you know, obviously I'm teaching, I'm trying to make films, I'm trying to um, stay sane in the process as well. Um, but life is good. Life is good and yeah. can't complain. And, um, you know, looking forward to when I can actually travel back and visit again. Um, but yeah. Wow. And you just, you got tenure at University of Hawaii. I did. I yeah. got tenure in, in 2015 or 16. Um, I can't remember now, which is crazy. And um, which was very um, exciting. It was a lot of work. Um, yeah. you know, I really kind of came from a filmmaking background and had to, I, I got tossed into academia. Um, very abrupt uh, shift. So it took a, a little while for me to kind of, it really freaked me out for the longest time that people called me a professor. I was like looking around <laughs> for somebody else in the room, like who are they talking to? Um, but it has certainly been an enjoyable journey. And, um, you know, I'm really just um, excited. You know, this has been, like you said, Eleanor, a very long time coming. I've been working on this trilogy for yeah. like over 20 years now. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's yeah. been a long time. Um, so it's really, um, awesome that they're all going to be shown together very soon on um, PBS and um, you know Tokyo Hula um, took me forever to finish so I know you guys have been kind of my cheerleaders along the way and I so appreciate that um, but yeah I'm just excited to share the films and um, see what folks think. Yeah, tell us more about that, um, the trilogy and how that came about. Um, it's showing there. There's um, it's showing through Pacific Heartbeat in May, correct? Yes. And this is really exciting for for everyone to just have it back to back. And I haven't seen American Aloha for a long time. Yeah, well, <laughs> American Aloha was the first film in the trilogy, right? Yeah. So that was really the first time that. Um, I was directing and producing a documentary. Yeah. Um, so I was really kind of learning how to make a documentary as I was making the film. And it took us about five years 
um, to finish that first film. And um, that focused on hula on the continent, in particular um, in Native Hawaiian communities in Southern California and the Bay Area of California. Um, Susie Ka'io in um, Carson, California was a subject, as well as Mark Kele'i Malu right. and my kumu, Patrick Kumu, Maku Akane, um, you know, all were sort of featured in that film. And, you know, from the first film in the trilogy, I think that in showing it in film festivals and having it broadcast on um, POV, a lot of the reactions and questions I got in Q&A were largely centered around men dancing. People were kind of shocked to see men dancing hula. And I was like, God, it's so bizarre that there's this stereotype and this stigma about men dancing hula. So, um, you know, my very dear friend, whom many of you all know, Kale Wolford, and I kind of put our heads together and thought, wouldn't it be awesome if we could um, convince Kumo Robert Casimero to let us do a doc on him. Um, and that became the second film of the trilogy, Nakamale the Men of Hula, um, which was so much fun and just a blast to make. Um, and they, um, those guys are all still very near and dear to my heart. Um, and I took a little bit of a break from the trilogy in, you know, in between um, one and two, I did a film called One Voice about the Kamehameha School Song Contest, right. which was another really super fun film. Um, I got to hang out with high school students for a year. Um, and we're getting ready to do a couple screenings of um, One Voice um, to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Pacific Islanders and Communications. Um, wow. So it's screening right now virtually on the um, Indigenous um, Lens virtual series um, from HIF, um, sponsored by Pacific Islanders and Communications. So you can watch that online right now. And it's coming soon to Campus 2021. Um, and we're going to be doing a Q&A with some of the song contest leaders from that film. They're all grown up. They're you know, they have careers, they, they have children, they're oh my just God. Amazing, <laughs> amazing people. So that's gonna be like a very fun mini reunion. Um, and then, you know, I really started work on the third film in the trilogy, Tokyo Hula, a long time ago, probably about 2009, um, 2010, I started researching and developing the film and fundraising. Um, I made my first trip to Japan. I'd never been before. Um, I believe in 2009 with Kumu Robert and Kumu mm -hmm. Patrick and Keo um, for the Pan Pacific Hula exhibition. And we toured all over Japan and I was just kind of hanging out, meeting people, trying to figure out right. what I wanted to make a movie about. And that was really my first introduction um, to Hula there. Um, so that was really fun and exciting. And that really kind of um, started this very long journey to finishing the third film. Oh my gosh, it's it's just so amazing how much you have done. Um, you know, as Kuma Patrick said in in the video that you are Lady Gaga of Hawaii. Well, no one has seen it yet, Eleanor. You're giving it away. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't forget, we're yeah. gonna see it. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. Oh, <laughs> my problem. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been drinking either, but. Um, <laughs> But it's really exciting. It's just it's just amazing the journey that you've been to and the amount of work that you've done uh, in between um, making the film. It's, it's, I'm always in awe by your energy, and I know that you're. It's a lot of stress, but it's just amazing to see the the final outcome because it's always so beautiful and so profound. Your your stories. Um, and I know that Hatsumi is on um, online also, so I would like for her to be part of this um, panel. So you guys can kind of tell us your journey and we can kind of pan over to, um, to promote the, 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 um, the trilogy uh, showing. Ah, there she is. Stacy, can you... Um, Put her, put her video. Uh, we just need to, yep, there we go. Oh, there you go. <gasps> Aloha, <Yeah>. small one. <laughs> Keep it clean, guys. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> unmute unmute <laughs> yourself, Hatsumi. Hit the unmute button. Get, okay, I did it. I did there it. Hi, go. how are you? Oh. Good to see you. So our buddies. <laughs> hey. So how, yes. so how, when did you start um, working with Lizette on Tokyo Hula? When? Yeah. 
I was shooting, shooting wise, it was 2013, right? 2013. Yeah. Okay. It was oh, wow. long, it's one hot summer. So, but you know, for me, like going to Japan with Lizette and the camera crew was kind of an exciting trip for me too, because to me, like uh, um, I started dancing hula after I moved to New York. Mm -hmm. And when I was living in Japan, I believe it was before the hula movement. So during the filming, I realized, you know, how much hula and Hawaiian culture are loved of people in Japan. I didn't, actually, I didn't know. So I was stunned to see that many kumus from Hawaii right. and the teaching hula very, very seriously. So that was quite an uh, experience for me. That was my, fun. yeah. So when we started hula, we had, I had no clue um, really like what it was about. If it was just dancing and then I started with, um, um, Hawaii Culture Foundation, and then Lizette, I think, was in and out for when I when I started, and then she was working on American Aloha, and then when this came out, it was just like, oh my goodness, um, you know, and especially when we went to Kaahahula, I mean, that was just like a big eye opener for for us, the first one, right? So, <laughs> and I just didn't realize that the, it was so, um, you know, when when I started hula, it was still very um, the halals were very protective of their um, lineage. Um, it wasn't like open to a lot of people. Um, to, for at least that's my that was my my experience. But um, but with when we started journeying our hula together with our hula together, um, and Lizette started working on her film. It just she kind of just opened that window for me that there was there was this whole big um, uh, in California, this, uh, big halals and there's, there's, it was, the hula community was so big in, in, in California and with American hula and then, um, American Aloha, American Aloha, Aloha. sorry, <laughs> um, then it was just, it, this journey that Lizette had with her film, I just felt like we were all part of uh, her hula community in New York. We were just all part of it. And it's just amazing that from, from when we, when they started, when we started hula, you've always been talking about the trilogy. And now Tokyo Hula is getting a lot of awards and you're, you're, it's just amazing to see the success that you've had in this film. So I don't know where I'm going with this right now. <laughs> well, I mean, thank you, Eleanor. That's very sweet. And yeah, it really, it has been a journey, right? I think what's so cool about hula, and this is probably true for a lot of people who are listening, yeah. is that it changes your life, right? The minute yeah. you start dancing, it becomes a way of life. And, yeah. you know, depending on, you know, whenever it comes to you, whenever you happen to fall in love with it, and maybe you have times where you need to take breaks in your life and you come back to it, it's gonna always be there for you. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the, the bonds and the relationships that we all have through whatever hula journey you're on um, are some of the most important relationships that we have in our lives. Um, and how lucky are we, right? Um, and you know, certainly I feel like Hatsumi-san, um, you were amazing and I would not have been able to um, traipseed all over Japan with a camera crew without you because number one, I do not speak Japanese. Like I cannot order a bowl of noodles. I cannot get anything vegetarian. I, you know, Katsumi made everything happen no. logistically. <laughs> so, um, and she was the first one to tell me when I was making a mistake or, or doing something inappropriate or culturally stupid. So thank you for that, Hatsumi. No, no, you were, you were doing very good, good. But, you know, for me, like, uh, you know, when, um, 
so to everyone. So when you shoot in Japan, you need a permission almost everywhere to shoot them, you know, like in New York too. But, and not only that, there are some unwritten rules, you know, which are unique Japanese manners. But after living in New York for so long, I sometimes forgot about them. <laughs> so, <laughs> at one time, I still remember that the security guard scolded me. Remember when we were shooting in the inside of the school? Anyway, and the other time when uh, <laughs> when uh, we we were yeah scold when we were shooting in the station, I believe the policeman found our camera and then starting questioning me. It's got blah, 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 blah. But as soon as he saw you guys, you know, gaijin people, then suddenly they stopped asking anything. So I was sometimes pretend like a, I'm a gaijin too, you know. I look like a Japanese, but I don't understand what you are saying. I do remember that. <laughs> So, but yeah. you got you guys are doing really good. You, you I think it was that was, yeah, that was. It's a, it sounded like a lot of fun from your stories. Um, so, Stacy, did you want to um, show the clips? I would actually at this point Pacific Pulse uh, yeah. and um, so for folks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you the um, the link to PIC's um, website, and it's go it's in the chat there. Um, if you want to see it on your own, go ahead and go ahead and go to that link. Um, just go click on play, and we'll be doing the same thing here. You'll get better quality for sure. Um, but we'll be back here in about nine minutes. I don't know. What are we supposed to do, guys? I don't know. Chat. <laughs> Keep oh, it I don't know. Hold on. You, you, so we can still hear you guys. <laughs> documentary on hula, the American Aloha. And that was the first time, and she came to the hello, introduced herself, and um, I was so impressed with Lizette because for those people who know Lizette, Lizette is super prepared. She's very studious. It's one, one of the reasons why I allowed her to study with me for our Inuki class, because she was in New York and the class was in San Francisco. But I had no doubt that she would be Fantabulous. At the time I was dancing hula in New York, and I would constantly get like very dumb questions about hula. It just kind of gave me this fuel to kind of say, okay, 
I'm so tired of trying to explain it over and over and over again. I mean, why don't I just make a film? I would say at the time, there wasn't, like, I didn't really feel like there were lots of stories about Hawaii and Hawaiian culture that were, you know, on public television. There were a lot of, like, the first questions in Q&A were kind of like, oh, my God, like, I had no idea that men danced. I'd never seen a man dance hula. How did this happen? And there were, there were so many questions um, from that film that made me kind of realize, like, hmm, maybe I should make a film about men who dance. very dear friend, Keo Wolford, we started talking, and because he danced for Kumu Robert Casimero, we were like, wouldn't it be cool if we could get Robert to agree to let us do a film about him and the only all-male halal in Hawaii? So when he finally agreed to, you know, allow us, really, to make the film, I felt of course, ecstatic and super excited, but I also felt this tremendous pressure. Like, I really wanted to do um, a good job. I wanted the film to be something that really represented Robert, really represented the men. I just got very lucky. I got very, very lucky. And I also, I kind of think like it, I had very little to do with it. I was just like kind of a conduit to kind of help capture this like amazing, tiny little piece of their journey. In his 30th anniversary, Robert Casimero. Everything about that movie was pretty magical. Pacific Islanders and Communications was working with Heather Jeannie, and they um, were going to executive produce a film about the Kamehameha School Song Contest. And that was, I think, in 2007.